Good evening. A mother and her partner who battered to death a four-year-old boy after subjecting him to six months of systematic starvation and cruelty have been found guilty of his murder. Daniel Pelker was turned from a beautiful little boy into a bag of bones by the couple who were meant to care for him. Instead, they denied him food, imprisoned him and force-fed him salt. Well, tonight, questions are being asked why so many people failed to spot what was happening to Daniel. Our reporter, Callum Watkinson, has been following the case and joins us now from Birmingham Crown Court. Callum. Yes, after listening to more than eight weeks of evidence, it took this jury just four hours to agree that Magdalena Wuschak and Mariusz Krejewek had indeed murdered Daniel Pelker. They showed very little reaction as the verdicts were translated for them into Polish. In a moment, we'll hear some reaction from Daniel's family, but first, here is what the Crown Prosecution Service had to say in reaction to the verdicts. Daniel Pelker was a healthy young boy of four years of age when he started school in September 2011. By the time he died seven months later, he was a gaunt, frightened little boy who had gone through immense suffering. Well, that immense suffering very sadly came to an end on the 3rd of March last year, and it was the defendants themselves who called an ambulance eventually in the small hours of the morning. Oh, listen, my son, my son, he, he stopped breathing. OK, what's, um, he do, what's he doing now? Is he breathing? <laughs> no, he's not breathing. Okay. Is, there, is there anybody else there with you? <laughs> my partner. My OK, what's your son's name? Daniel Pelka. When Magdalena Wuschak made this call in March last year, her son had probably been dying alone in this tiny room on this urine-soaked mattress for 36 hours. Most likely the victim of a beating by her partner, Mariusz Krejewek. Police have called her words to the operator staged and rehearsed. Has he, has he been poorly? Yes. No, he, uh, today he, to, today he, he started uh, feeling very bad. OK today it was not just today but every day a campaign of cruelty described by the prosecution as incomprehensible and Daniel's natural father cannot understand I feel very, very bad uh, I feel uh, I want uh, hit somebody I want uh, I want to kill Magda I want to kill uh, Marius it's not uh, human uh, somebody kill little boy why? Why? Why kill? Subdural hematoma. Bruise at the rim of the lower part of the ear. Bruise with central loss of the superficial layer of the skin. Pathologists found 23 separate of sites of injury on the four-year-old's emaciated right body. It was a massive blow to the head the right that arm. killed him. Two areas of bruising over the right side. In Coventry, behind the closed doors of the family home, the beatings he received were regular and brutal and combined with a systematic regime of starvation that stopped his very bones from growing. On the days he went to school, Daniel was given a tiny packed lunch. He hunted for food scraps in playground bins and stole sandwiches from other children. But when he returned to school following holidays, that's when staff noticed his weight had plummeted dramatically. For during the weeks he was here at home with his mother and her partner, he was probably given no food at all. Daniel's increasingly desperate efforts to feed himself were punished with mouthfuls of table salt, force-fed, to ensure, prosecutors said, he would vomit what little food he'd been able to scavenge. He weighed a stone and a half at the end, the school uniform he'd been bought in September hanging from him by February. A teacher wept during the trial as she spoke of Daniel in the days before his death. She described a boy who looked like an old man, sad, you could almost see through him. Had his mother called for help sooner, he might have lived. Daniel received that final beating, if you like, on the Thursday evening after school. We believe then that Daniel was placed in this box room from Thursday afternoon or Thursday evening, and he was left there until eventually he died in the early hours of Saturday morning. which 
again is hard to accept when you think of how callous and cold and the lack of compassion that Daniel, that was afforded Daniel, that he was left in that room on his own, um, in the dark, with no bedding, um, and died on his own. And on that Friday afternoon, as Daniel lay unconscious, Krejewek went out to do a deal on some cheap diesel he'd been offered. And in a text, Daniel's mother was clear about what they should not do for her injured son. He'll get over it by tomorrow, she said. There's no point to stress ourselves out and call an ambulance. That will cause proper problems. Other text messages proved that the destruction of this little boy was a team effort by the two, who each tried to blame the other as the trial went on. Take him to a room and lock him there, said Krejewek in one exchange. You'll have some peace. Do wait for me. We'll deal with Rudy after school, she replied, using Daniel's nickname. He won't see Grub at all. And a month before Daniel's death, Wushak texted Krejewek to say she'd nearly drowned the four-year-old. He's temporarily unconscious, she said. I'm having some quiet time. I'm still not entirely sure who, if you like, actually inflicted the final blow, but both parents, adults, charged with caring for this little boy, um, acted together. It was prolonged, it was premeditated and it was pre-planned and there's lots of evidence to say that it was teamwork between the two. Often drunk and high on drugs, the couple had little regard for either of the children in their care. The one who survived life under their roof told the court via video link that the children had to look after themselves. When Mayush was drinking, my brother had a cold bath. I was downstairs. I heard him screaming, the child said, as jurors wept. I came upstairs and I got my brother from the bath and I put a towel on him and hugged him. We had cuddles at night time. That's why I want him back. A serious case review will now examine how a child was allowed to die this way. Who knew what and when and what action did they take? Many questions, no answers yet from the school and Coventry Council. As Daniel's killers head for prison, Eric Pelker is haunted by a question of his own. Why Magdalena don't tell me? Why? I take to, to me, to my family, and uh, we live together. I have two, two child, and, uh, on, uh, and uh, one more child, it's not problem for me. It's my little boy. I don't know why. Here Wushak collects his little boy from school on the final day but one of his short and painful life. He trails behind his mother as she strides off ahead. A glimpse perhaps of the cold callous lack of compassion police officers say she had for her son as with barely a backward glance she leads him home to Krejewek and that final, fatal beating. Callum Watkinson, ITV News, Coventry. Just appalling. Well, as Callum said, a serious case review is already underway into Daniel's death. We're told that that will be published within six weeks. It's clear from the evidence we've heard at the trial, though, that concerns were being raised about him months before his death. In January 2011, Daniel was taken to hospital with a broken arm. Social services closed the case the following June after reviewing the medical evidence. Magdalena Wuschak had six health appointments on a matter unrelated to Daniel throughout that year. We know at least two of those visits were at home. In October, a second nurse and health support worker went to the house three times. The health support worker made a further visit alone. In November, Wushak missed an appointment with the nurse. The support worker tried to contact her by phone, received no call back, and so wrote her a letter in December. The same month, Wushak cancelled two appointments for Daniel that had been arranged by the support worker with a community GP, and another in December. At school, Daniel's attendance had dropped to 63% by December and an educational welfare officer visited the house. 
In January, a teacher noticed bruising on his neck and recorded her concerns. And in February, Daniel came to school with two black eyes, according to evidence from the two school staff, and nothing was written in the school's concerns book. Well, for more on this, let's return now to Callum Watkinson outside Birmingham Crown Court. Callum, people understandably shocked that so many people in authority were in contact with Daniel, and yet no one was able to stop the abuse. Why? Well, everyone who's had any contact with Magdalena Wushak has pointed out that she was a very plausible and convincing liar. That said, the NSPCC told me yesterday they do believe Daniel has slipped through the net, and that's what this serious case review run by Coventry Safeguarding Children's Board uh, will look into. We did ask them for an interview, they declined, but they did send us this clip they filmed themselves. New information has emerged during the trial. Therefore, the Safeguarding Children Board will now reconsider the work completed so far on the review in the light of all the evidence presented in court. We will aim to publish the final review within six weeks. Now, the British Association of Social Workers did say this afternoon this case does appear to indicate more training is needed right across the board. It really enforces a need for all agencies, education, health, social service, everybody who is involved in children's lives to be trained on child protection, to be aware and very clear about the need to protect our children. So the question's just beginning tonight. The case here at Birmingham Crown Court almost over. There's just a matter of sentencing for these two murderers. They'll be back here on Friday morning to hear how long they will have to spend in prison. Callum, thank you. Other news, the future of Stafford Hospital.